say like yeah. do we think that ai at least in the future i don't know any time frame between now and infinity if we think that um it will essentially take over most of development and be able to automate most processes that we do now to like the same level of skill and not, I, don't know, I still can't put my finger on the creativity aspect of AI, but at least skill yeah. wise, do we think it'll get up there? I mean, most is a big word, most of development like you used. So mm -hmm. I won't try to predict that far out. I do think at some point it will become a big factor. Let's put it that way, where, where it'll be helpful enough that if you're not using it, you're at a big disadvantage, right? However, <laughs> that day is not today, yeah. right? And, <laughs> and so, yeah. so in the long term, I think AI will become pretty good. Uh, I mean, in the long term, it may, we may actually get general intelligence and make it smarter than people, I don't know. But sometime before that, it's like it would become more useful tool-wise. But like, yeah, as you describe, it, you know, if you don't care what image you get back, it's really astonishingly impressive how good these image generators are right mm -hmm. but if you're like actually trying to accomplish something specific it's incredibly frustrating because first of all you know you try to generate an image it's not really what you wanted um and then you try to go into an iterative loop where you try to correct things and it becomes pretty clear that like the system you're talking to doesn't really understand what's in the image either right um, and I'm sure there are a number of people working on that specific problem, but this is very easy to observe. Like anyone right now can go to mid journey or grok or anything like that. You don't have to pay a subscription to use these things and just like try it out and tr try to make something very, try to make like the exact video game character you want. That's not a copy of some other character. Right. Yeah. And you'll find it's very difficult. Yeah. yeah I mean, the, the more specific you try to get with AI, the less accurate it is to what you're actually trying to create yeah for sure it starts um, adding in all sorts of weird stuff uh and a similar thing it's harder to observe uh you know bitmaps are very easy to look at and evaluate is this what i want but programming is similar like you hear all this hype about how ai is awesome for programming and it'll do it makes me so much more efficient people say on twitter and whatever and like anytime someone says that now I just know they're not very advanced programmers at all and probably spend most of their time doing very boilerplate things that probably shouldn't be programmed in the first place because it's a sign of bad code, right? If you're doing that stuff, um, then yeah, you tell the AI to like generate the 57,000th version of, you know, reading an event from Windows and you've got that. But like, that's the sort of thing that that's not what somebody really doing interesting work on a game is doing at all, right? Right. They're not doing glue code. They're not doing boilerplate code. I mean, there's a little bit of that stuff once in a while, but most of what people making a game are doing is solving very hard problems that have to do with understanding the whole system. Like, so code, another way to describe code is it's a series of very specific decisions that have been made about how things should be done, right? And those decisions all have to work together. And the more lines of code there are, the more decisions there are that all have to be coherent with each other, right? And so to work on the code, you have to understand all the decisions that interact with the code that you're working on. And sometimes those decisions are very invisible, in which case it's helpful if you have a senior programmer on the team who can explain those to you, or if people were very diligent about documenting and commenting, which a lot of programmers are very bad about, right? But those are also the things that AI is horrible at right now um, with regard to programming. Like, it'll notice patterns, it'll regenerate very specific patterns for small snippets of code, but understanding the nuances of large sets of decisions is just not there. It's not part yeah. of what's happening right now. Now, that may improve. And in fact, so part of what's happening right now is that LLMs, large language models, have become so successful that they're sort of getting all the hype right now. And all these companies are like, you know, trying to find the simplest way to make money, like being a wrapper around an LLM Sorry. for like a chat agent or whatever. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I'm a diabetic. That's my alarm going off. <laughs> oh, I didn't <laughs> hear okay. it at all. It, it oh, okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Sorry. Yeah. Go on. Um, so that's the main thing, but people have sort of forgot that even before LLMs were this successful, 
we had good success in other departments. So there was like all the Go playing AI and stuff, right? Like AlphaGo mm -hmm. and AlphaZero, those were not language models, right? They were doing something different. It was still, um, I mean, the term deep learning has been out of, uh, you know, out of vogue for a long time, I think, but it was still that kind of thing, but it wasn't like, it wasn't like training on a language corpus and then getting it to play Go, right? It was a different thing. And so at some point, I feel like we're going to top out on language models and then people will go back and try to integrate them with that kind of thing more. And we'll see. We'll, we'll see what that yields. So we... don't count AI out, right? But like, there's a lot of people over claiming right now, like tremendously.